So, big deal, Tesla's just released its refreshed Model 3 Highland and slashed the prices on its other models. Now, the naysayers will claim it's a desperate attempt to revive flagging sales because the demand for EVs has collapsed. ChargePoint and Blink Charging in the USA make a dramatic announcement to their shareholders, while Tesla's supercharger at Rugby on the M6 this morning have 26 250 kilowatt chargers available out of 28 installed. Well, Dave takes it on, joins the dots, and the outcome is staggering to say the least. Well, in my comments section, I regularly get asked how Genie Point and Shell Recharge are still going, charging 85 pence per kilowatt hour. Who on earth is using them at that price? And viewers regularly take great delight in telling me that the charging network is dire, not enough of them, huge queues. Well, that's all old history as of today. So what is actually happening out there? Now, back in 2011, when EVs first made an appearance, there were simply no chargers. So governments wanting to encourage the adoption of EVs around the world offered huge grants and subsidies to anyone who'd install them. At the time, the Nissan Leaf, Renault Zoe and VW e-Golf had very low range, often less than 100 miles, and very slow charging speeds, typically 40 or 50 kilowatts. These EVs were not ideal for road trips. So the newly formed charging networks, like Electric Highway and Genie Point, installed loads of 50 kilowatt chargers that were all that was needed at that time. Then Tesla arrived 2012. They got no grants or subsidies, and then Model S had 150 kilowatt charging speed and 300 mile range. They could road trip. They also started building their supercharger network for themselves with 150 kilowatt chargers. Well, as Tesla sales grew, so their competitors, well, I use that word loosely, began to build cars with slightly longer range and slightly faster charging speeds. With that came a new demand for EV chargers that were much faster, more powerful, so ultra-rapid chargers arrived. Speeds above 100 kilowatts and charging times now well under an hour. But they arrived really slowly. The old 50 kilowatt chargers were still there, but of course by now, they were already failing and governments in their wisdom had given no money whatsoever for service, maintenance or repairs, just new installations. So as these failed, the networks just installed new ones. Very few people used them back then, very few people use them now. ChargePoint and Blink Charging in America, both founded around 2011, last week announced they've run out of money. All the government grants have been spent, loads of charges have been installed, and sitting back waiting for the money to roll in from EV Motorist just hasn't worked. They have virtually no income. They've now warned shareholders that unless they get additional funds before the end of the year, they will be out of business. Well, same over here. In the UK, Shell Recharge has just announced it's looking for a buyer for its entire EV charging business because it is losing massive sums of money and they want to concentrate on their profitable core business, well, digging up the Arctic and destroying the planet. Electric Highway ran out of money many years back and were bought out by GridServe. Genie Point are also on their last legs. They've installed chargers using grant money and that for them has also run out and they've tried sitting back and waiting for their money to roll in from EV drivers. It hasn't, and it won't. Meanwhile, Tesla has increased the number of chargers at Rugby Motor Services on the M6 from 12 to 28. Yes, 28, and also grid server there. Last time I looked, they had 12 350 kilowatt chargers. That's 40 ultra-rapid chargers in one service station. Exeter Services has more than 24 chargers and more being installed. Swansea Moto Services on the M4 has around 30 chargers. All across the country, massive charging hubs, a lot of them in motorway services, are being installed. Tesla now do not install less than 12 chargers per location. GridServe seem to be doing the same. Well, back to Tesla. They have announced the launch of their Model 3 refresh model named Highland, Highlander. And that on its own is a slap in the face for Ford, because Highland Park was the site of one of Ford's first mass production lines in the world. Anyway, the Model 3 is very different, even though the battery and motors are the same, 
I'm not going to go into detail here what's different. I will do a follow-up video going into that detail, but I'm looking here at the business model. Legacy Auto, that's the likes of Ford, Vauxhall, Peugeot, VW and all the rest, all used to re release refresh models after two or three years, adding very few, if any, extra features. It was usually just a body refresh. It looked different. And they up upped the price to reflect that it was a new model. Tesla's just slapped them in the face. The new model, the Model 3 Highlander, is exactly the same price as the old one. And to avoid the Osborne effect, well, that's where a company announces a new model being released, causing all existing orders to be cancelled and no order, new orders being placed as everyone waits for the better model, Tesla has slashed the price of the old Model 3, plus all their other models at the same time. It's absolutely amazing what you can do when you have industry-leading profit margins and insane profits for the size of the company. And most people have no idea just how huge this is. In America, you'll be able to buy a Tesla Model S or an X dual motor for $74,000. Now, the X is a full seven-seater. That's the one with gullwing doors. And it gets the IRA subsidy of $7,500. And that makes the Model X brand new, cheaper than a mid-range Ford Mach-E. That's crazy. In the UK, $74,000, that equates to about £60,000. And over here, the Mackey GT sells for £74,000. That's not dollars, that's pounds. £74,000. That's staggering. Now, complete bonus. The Highland Model 3 will be sold in the UK and Australia with delivery starting from October and will not be launched in America this year. Wow. That is all to do with China. UK cars and Australian cars are made in Shanghai, and that plant is the first to be converted to the Highland. American plants are not yet converted and likely won't be before the end of the year. We in the UK get our cars from China. America, cutting its nose off to spite its face, can't and won't buy from China. But they will still have a massive bonanza with all the price cuts while they're waiting for the launch. Well, Legacy is now doomed. The final nail has been put in the coffin and every criticism from the anti-EV brigade has now been totally demolished. Discounted EVs in America are now considerably cheaper than the Legacy ICE equivalents. There are more ultra-rapid chargers than ever and they're being installed at a scary rate. 28 chargers in one supercharger station in the UK... Well, heavily discounted Model 3 and Y are now for sale in the UK. Grab one while you can. They're still a great car. The efforts of the Legacy Auto, like Ford, are absolutely pitiful. Their F-150 Lightning, before it was pulled from sale, was approaching $90,000 for a very poor range, poor software, poor charging, unreliable, run-of-the-mill pickup. Tesla launches its Cybertruck, hopefully later this month. Date hasn't been announced yet. And prices are not yet declared, but my best estimate is the launch model will sell for sixty dollars or $65,000. It will have a much longer range, much better performance, incredibly fast charging with the V4 chargers, and superior towing efficiency. Ford is still in the process of changing over its plant to refurbish the F-150 production lines to allow them to make cars faster. By the time it's finished and the cars start rolling out, the market will have moved on and gone. Same for GM with their Silverado. They're making just a handful each month. The market has moved on in what is available. The prices have been slashed. Tesla availability will obviously be appalling in the short term due to massive demand, but production will ramp up rapidly and they will swamp the market. And all of this is before they launch the under $25,000 car. And the buyers will wait. Tesla waiting lists regularly top 1 million people. Legacy couldn't make a profit at nearly $90,000. Tesla, with their innovative pr production methods, huge giga castings, structural battery packs, stainless steel body shells, have slashed their production costs, meaning that at these silly cheap prices, they will still make an industry-winning profit margin on each and every car sold. 
Plus, as a bonus, all the competitors' cars, however few they produce, would just head straight for a Tesla supercharger to top up. Is that another slap in the face? Well, Ford and GM are now, yes, really only just now, beginning to look at direct sales, doing away with dealers, saving thousands of dollars on each car. But of course they can't move quickly because they're heavily unionised. And the UAW in America is now demanding a 50% rise in hourly rates, more paid leave, no redundancy, shorter working week, free healthcare. Oof. I'd love to see how they get out of this one. Legacy chargers, Genie Point, Shell, Charge Point, they're losing money, going bust. Single 50 kilowatt chargers, about as much use as an ashtray on a motorcycle. And they can't look to Tesla to buy them out. Tesla would never, ever install a single charger on the smelly, fume-filled Shell forecourt. They are absolutely redundant, extinct, heading the way of the dinosaurs. Now, the next 12 months will be really fascinating. There are huge, massive changes on the way. They are already happening. Most people haven't seen them. But catch up. And the final few EV deniers who hope for the governments to U-turn on the ban on new fossil fuel cars in 2030 and 2035, depending where you are, they've got more chance of being bitten by a lettuce. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.